Hi guys, this is Matt from ESU, and today we are going to start a new series on the Loke Sound 5 sound slots. Um, how to create new ones, um, all of the ins and outs of them. This is going to be a very in-depth course, and I'm going to break it up into very small pieces so that we don't overwhelm everybody. Uh, this is not for everybody. Uh, the, the sound slots can be very complicated, and that's why I'm breaking it down. But it's exactly what we do when we create sound files. We use exactly the same software. Um, I'm not probably going to get into uh, the creation and sound editing. Uh, that's honestly just not my forte. I would not be a very good teacher in that. Uh, we have staff members who do this for a living, so I don't need to. Um, I've tried to learn it. It's not for me. Not, it, not everybody's got the ear for it, and I would say that I don't. Um, but I do understand the the sound slots and the sound file creation and the logic that goes into it so I'm going to teach you guys that the best that I can um, and what you'll notice is that there's many 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 ways to do some of the same things so even though I'm going to show you how we do it just keep in mind that it's not the only way to do it and there's things that can be done that I've, I've watched end users create logic with inside these sound slots that's even more complicated than what we do um, so anybody can create just about anything with the logic that's in here so it's it's a fun puzzle at times but it's not as hard as it seems uh, there is a lot of complication but once you understand some of the basics of it it all works together so we're going to go over some of the terminology in the in the course um, and then work our way in depth from there to the point where we can create new sound slots uh, from nothing um, but the first thing we're going to do is just kind of take a quick tour so as you open a Loke Sound 5 project, I would definitely start learning by using one that we've already created. That way you can see what's been done, you can see how it works, and uh, as you start to learn and create your own things, you have something to compare it to and say, huh, I wonder why theirs worked but mine didn't, and you'll be able to look and see, ah, that's why, because they've done this step and I, I missed that one. So it just gives you a good learning tool to be able to um, experiment and, and uh, do some trial and error by seeing what's been done already. So um, so again, I'm going to open up a file that's kind of the typical one we've been using in our uh, Loke Programmer series. Uh, this is the 829 12-cylinder uh, 567C. So the first thing I want to do is just go down, if you haven't done it already, go down to the Sound tab. And we're going to look at the most complicated, in my mind, uh, sound slot that uh, ESU decoders have, and that's Sound Slot 1. Um, there are up to uh, 32 main sound slots with a couple special ones at the end. Um, each of these can be used in a lot of different ways. Uh, we almost always, as a default, use the same ones for the same things, and that just makes it easier for customers to be able to do things. But as an end user, if you're creating something new, you don't have to follow this by any means. You can do all of this in any way that you feel you want to, and as long as it works, there's nothing wrong with that. So. Let's look at that first sound slot. Uh, again, it's, it's the most complicated. And the reason I want to do that is to show you what our engineers do and what they've created um, and some of the complication that can be. And I don't show you this to scare you because at the end you're going to understand all of this. Uh, or at least that's my goal. <laughs> um, there is a lot here. And if you, if you look at it in all, um, in total, I should say, I'm going to minimize and shrink this a little bit so you can see a little bit more in one screen what's happening. There's a lot of information here. But overall, it's just a flow chart. It's actually quite simple. Uh, you can just kind of follow the arrows. Um, some of the states, and I've, I'll get into what everything is. Uh, this is a transition line uh, from one state or container to another. Uh, this is a, a state which just simply holds a sound file or a wave file I should say. Uh, the blue is a container and that usually holds multiple states that are doing something special. Uh, often our loops are in here um, uh, and then again something quite special is usually going on in there. Um, you can start looking and you can see we use the same terminology for our state 
states within our sound files. So you have um, mute to start. Uh, this is like a motor start, startup sounds. Um, you know, once you have S, this is stop. This is our mute to stop. I should not miss the start. It's mute to stop. Um, S would be stop. Uh, D1 would be drive step one, or in North American terminology, in a, in a diesel locomotive, would be notch one, notch two, notch three. Um, and then you can kind of work your way up through there. You have some idle sounds. Um, you know, that would also be stop. Idle would be another name for that. Um, you have some decelerations and accelerations. So here's your acceleration from uh, drive step one to drive step two. Uh, and you can there's different paths that can be taken depending on what we're trying to do don't get overwhelmed by this this looks like a lot and it is a lot but once you start understanding what's happening it's, it's not that complicated um, it looks the, the bark is worse than the bite as they say um, so you can start working your way up some like I said faster accelerations once you work your way up it's looking for conditions so if I turn my throttle down quickly before it works all the way up it's gonna have to come back down and and settle into a drive step now if I'm in a drive step and I turn my throttle down I want to go to zero again just follow the arrows look at the conditions and you'll see that it's it's coming back down to idle uh, we do special things for dynamic brakes and again that's looking for some type of a function button command sometimes it's looking for a speed command sometimes it's looking for acceleration or deceleration in the throttle um, sometimes another sound slot is triggering these there's so much uh, um, there's so much ability to do things and there's lots and lots of ways to do it lots of control um, here's a, a interesting thing uh, let me work my way back to it you see this blue line on the bottom of that that means that there is a logic feature that's being triggered when this wave file plays so if I just select that and it will go over this much more in depth but uh, you can scroll down and you can see that the dimmer logic is happening so uh, just as a neat feature this right here this container that I opened is the startup sounds and you can see that as it's starting you hear your, your fuel primer and as it's trying to start it's dimming the headlights just like uh, you know I'm, I'm draining the battery to try to start the engine so if my headlights are on it'll get dimmer because a lot of the, the power from that battery is going to the starter of the locomotive um, just like the prototype so we can do some really neat things by utilizing the features in the software so I'm not going to get into depth in any of this today it's just too much for one video um, another thing within the um, uh, the prime mover sound slot in particular in all of our files we give you some template values and some notes as to how all of our stuff is made some of them are kind of notes for us to remember and some of them are for other people so um, you know this way you can see what's going on um, that way if you're making uh, if you're creating new things um, you can see how we've done it or the things that we've used and you can you know if you don't see everything you can stretch that out and uh, see more and more so um, maybe if I go back to 100 that'll show me a little bit more yeah I've made that too big now <laughs> thought that might happen so so you can see how we've done things. Here's what all the share values do. And I'll get into the shares and the, the shifts and the breaks and um, how what each one of these do and how we're using them. Um, you know, here's sound configuration CV, sound CV configuration, sorry, um, notch points and how we use those, timers and how we use those and how you can use those. These are, are just our examples. Again, you guys can do anything you want and... Um, you don't have to follow our lead but uh, you know we've already done some of the work for you if you we know this works um, so as you're learning you can uh, you can share with us too we are always interested to see what our customers are doing they've done some really neat stuff um, so yeah let's uh, let's get out of that here's one that's a little less complicated this is just simply a coupler 
Um, this is very simple. It's looking for a function button to be on. If that function button is on, it'll play the coupling sound. And then it'll, after it's done playing that wave, it'll move on and play the silence as it's just waiting for the function button to be turned off. Once it's turned off, F equals false, it plays the uncoupling sound. And um, I can simulate that. And it's probably going to be a little bit loud. So uh, be ready for it. I don't want you to be startled here. And there's the coupling sound, and then it's just waiting for me to press that button again. So now that I've pressed it, if I want to uncouple as I pull away from the train, those sounds are, are already there. So, um, And then it just simply goes back. You can follow, using the simulator, you can follow the path. Um, you can also validate. So say you've built something, but you don't know if it's going to work or not. You can hit the validate button, and that'll go through and see if there's a fault. Um, say I get rid of this line, uh, this transition line. Now I know it actually won't work this way. So um, if I hit validate now, it'll show me some problems, and it'll actually tell me what the problem is. Now you may not understand that quite yet because we haven't gotten into um, you know what all of the features are all the names of everything so I'm not going to worry about that right now but um, I can simply build that back again very quickly and that was function equals false and now I've corrected it, I validate it again, and everything's okay, so it does not come up with an error. So it's also self-checking as you start to, to work on things. Um, I'll go over all of the sound slot properties. Um, you know, the, the name, that's pretty simple. Um, priority, uh, that was shown uh, how you adjust your priorities. Everything uh, is going to have a priority because there's only so many sound slots that can play at once. Um, I think we're up to... 10 at this point um, so maybe it's 12 I could be wrong I'll, I'll double check that and uh, put some notes in the video as I as I post it um, I believe it is 12 if I'm not mistaken but regardless um, you know after you get up there um, sounds can start playing over one another you may have a, a higher priority on some things than the other because you want this sound to play and if you've hit the limit of how many sounds can play at once you may take out a sound that uh, you just you won't hear with all that other stuff on so you want to be able to set your priorities each line also has its a priority of its own in order that it will go in so um, you may have uh, let's look at another one here um, we may have multiple ways out of a box so here's one I'm coming out of mute and I can do it um, multiple ways so it's always going to look at number one first and move its way through so there's uh, I get back into here it's um, the priority is important but there's there's lots of other features here I'm going to go over all the state properties the, the volume the pitch range um, you know some of the flags that can go on remember I showed you in the um, the prime mover side how we were using logic features being triggered by sounds in this cold start or warm start the, the dim the headlight that's being done down here uh, under mapping so I can actually use kind of my mapping table uh, just by hitting a wave file um, or I can trigger a light if I hit a wave file um, so you know there's there's lots that can be done um, or I can trigger another sound slot if I hit a certain uh, you know sound slot here um, there's lots and lots that can be done I can't iterate that enough um, we're going to go into all of this in depth. So today was just a basic lesson. I don't want to overwhelm you, and I feel maybe I already have. <laughs> um, there's there's a lot here, so I'm going to break this down again in very small chunks so that people can understand it. So um, if you'd like to follow along and learn, I encourage you to do so. There's so much power in your low sound decoders that you already have. I just want to show you how to use them. Um, unfortunately, we've not been as good as I would personally like in teaching this information. So it's it's my goal for 2022 to get as much information out to the public as to how to use our products. And one of the best ways for me to figure out how to do that is, or where, uh, one of the best places I should say to start with to do that is in the sound project overview and in the creation and adjusting of sound slots. Um, it is the basis of, of low sound decoders and um, 
it ha you have all the same abilities as we do and i know that there's there's customers out there that can do some amazing things with this so i look forward to seeing it as you as you follow along feel free to send some of those ideas or send your results even if you don't want to share your ideas there's there's people that'll make custom sound files and um do that uh for a little bit of extra money um you know selling custom horns things like that some give it away as, as shareware freeware um all of our esu sound files we do give away for free um but that's our business so um you know we we encourage customers to use the software to the best of their ability and to use it in any way that that is uh, working well for them so um guys thank you for following along as i go through this if there's pieces or or situations within the software that you have questions about please drop us a line at support at loksound.com. Give us suggestions of videos that you'd like us to, to create, um, features that you'd like us to go over. So enjoy, guys. Have fun. I know this is going to be a fun course. I'm looking forward to it. Um, and I hope that you're enjoying Loke Sounds as much as we do. Take care. Bye now.